Hello and welcome to Conversation 4, Part 5. So now we'll take those ideas from our last couple lessons and apply them to our conversation. And what is our situation? Well, you're looking for an apartment. Ooh, this one looks pretty nice. And you take your friend Bob to look at it with you. And the landlord shows you around. Here's this part. Here's that part. The best part is the view. So you open the window and... <gasps> wow! You see an old man with his shirt off, and he waves to you. Ayuhu, hello. Oh, oh my gosh. And how do you react? Well, maybe you're feeling kind of silly that day, having some fun, feeling peppy, and you say something like this. The view is really amazing. That old man looks like he's been working out. Hoo-hoo, big muscles, old man. Wow. And the landlord goes, Oh my, my apologies. What do you think about the apartment? So, oh my, is something you could say when you're shocked. Oh my. And then, my apologies. This is a way to say, oh, I'm sorry. Or, oh, I'm really sorry about that. But this is a bit more formal. Oh, my apologies. So if you're in a situation where it's a landlord and someone looking at a place, Maybe they'll use a more formal way to say, I'm sorry, and say, oh, my apologies. And then he moves on. What do you think about the apartment? He just gets down to business. He wants to know what you think. And you say, give me a minute to discuss with my life coach, Bob. So you want some time to talk it out with Bob. Now, a life coach, this is kind of a funny idea. A life coach is someone that helps you figure out your life. So they're like your coach. They're telling you what to do. They're helping you make decisions. And it's all decisions about your life. So it's called a life coach. Now, a life coach, this is kind of a silly idea. People don't often use this phrase, but you might hear it used in a funny way. Someone might talk about their friend. Oh, this is my friend. He's my life coach. Meaning someone you trust a lot and they give you advice pretty often. A more serious, more common way to say this would be my mentor. A mentor is someone that maybe like a professor who you talk to the professor and the professor will help you make decisions about what classes you take, what choices you make. Or a mentor might be at work. Some companies will have a mentor program where a younger staff member will have a mentor who is an older, more senior person. And that person helps them figure out their career path. There's also someone called an advisor. An advisor will give you advice. They give you hints and suggestions on what to do with your life, what kinds of decisions to do. An advisor is really common in school. Schools will have an advisor who will help you choose what classes and maybe Choose a direction. Maybe what's your career path. And then you and Bob go off to look around the apartment a little bit more. And a moment later, you're talking to Bob and you say, Bob, this might be the best apartment ever. It'll be even better once I decorate it. So here is that word ever that we learned about. This might be the best apartment ever. Here the word ever is used to make it stronger, to emphasize. And you're saying the best in all of history, the best of all time. This might be the best apartment ever. Now, could this be true? I don't know, but you're using it to exaggerate, to say that it's really, really good. The best something ever. It means you love it. It'll be even better once I decorate it. Now we talked about what it means to decorate. Now you're not changing the apartment, but you're putting things in the apartment. You're decorating it, putting stuff on the walls, putting stuff in the room to decorate the room. And Bob says, easy does it. You're kind of getting ahead of yourself, aren't you? So he starts with this phrase, easy does it. So you're jumping into it saying, I love this place. I'm gonna move in and then I'm gonna decorate it. And Bob says, easy does it. Easy does it is a phrase you use when someone is moving too fast or they're too intense about something. You want them to calm down. So 
Easy does it could mean slow down, you're moving too fast, you're deciding too quickly. Or it could mean calm down, you're too excited, so you need to calm down. So this phrase is really useful, you can use it anytime someone you know is too fast, too intense, too enthusiastic, they're not really thinking, they're deciding too quickly. You say, easy does it. You're kind of getting ahead of yourself, aren't you? And here we have another phrase, getting ahead of yourself. Now this is a phrase to describe what that person's doing. They are getting ahead of themselves. So getting ahead of yourself, getting ahead of himself, getting ahead of themselves, okay? So getting ahead of yourself means you're acting too quickly. You're deciding too fast. You can imagine someone is running and they're leaning forward. Their body is ahead of their feet. So what will happen? Well, if they're leaning forward too much, maybe they'll fall down and get hurt. So getting ahead of yourself means you're moving too fast and you're deciding too quickly and something might go wrong, you might get hurt. And you say, if you ever want to get a new place, you need to imagine it filled with your stuff. You're saying, if you ever want to get a new place. So you're imagining, if there's any time. So we use the word ever, meaning any time. So we're suggesting something. If you ever want to get a new place, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but if you ever want to get a new place, then what should you do? You need to imagine it filled with your stuff. Now this is true. If you're moving into an apartment, you want to look at it and try to think about what it looks like after all the stuff is in it. It's just an empty room. You can't really decide what it will be like to live there, right? So imagine it filled with your stuff. And Bob says, okay, I'll bite. How do you want to decorate? This phrase, I'll bite. This means I'll listen or I'll hear you out or I'll play your game. Now you can imagine one person says something and they're trying to get you to listen or get you to talk with them. And it's kind of like they're fishing. And there's a hook in the water and that's the topic. The topic they are throwing out there is like the hook in the water. And Bob is swimming around and he sees that topic, that hook, and he's like, I don't know if I want to talk about this. If I talk about this, will I get in trouble or will this be annoying? But he's going to trust you and he's going to try it. So I'll bite. Um, I will continue this conversation with you. Maybe he thinks this is a little bit crazy, but I'll trust that you're not going to go too crazy. I'll bite. So it could mean I'll listen. Uh, I'll let you continue your story. I'll bite. Or I'll hear you out. I'll let you explain what you mean. Or if someone says something a little bit silly and you think they're gonna play a trick on you, you could say, I'll bite, meaning I'll play your game. I'm gonna trust you now. I don't think you're gonna hurt me or anything. Maybe I think it's a little strange and silly, but sure, keep on going, explain it to me. And you say, I've been working out with my personal trainer lately. Oh, going to Bruno's classes. So here we have the present perfect continuous tense. I've been working out with my personal trainer. It started in the past and continued till now. And it continued on and you keep on working out with your personal trainer. It's not finished. It didn't happen one time. It happened many times. So we can use the word lately. And then you continue and you say, ever since I signed up for his classes, He's been saying that I need more protein in my diet. Here's that phrase ever since that we learned. We use the word ever to emphasize something, right? Emphasize the timing. You could say just the word since. Since means from that time and continuing till now. But if we, we use the word ever since, it emphasizes that it's been true the whole time. Maybe he keeps on telling me. Ever since I signed up for his classes, do, do, till now, he's been saying that I need more protein in my diet. This is a very common sentence structure that we will use to talk about personal training and exercising. I need more something in my diet. 
You probably know the word diet to mean losing weight. Oh, I'm on a diet, meaning you're trying to stop eating so much. You want to lose weight. But you can use the word diet to describe what you eat. So my diet means the foods that I eat. And so you can talk about your diet and what you need in your diet. Protein is very important for people who work out because it helps you build muscle. Protein comes from meats and eggs and beans, okay? Now there are five other core nutrients that you get from food. There's protein, which helps your, you build muscles. There are carbs or carbohydrates. Those give you energy. They come from noodles and rice. And then there are fats. Now people used to think all fats were bad, but now people accept fats are good for you. Fats can help your body grow and help your body absorb vitamins. And vitamins are good things from food that do many, many different things in your body. And then minerals are other little things in food that are like salts and metals that you get from foods that help your body too. So these are the five most important parts of food. And then Bob says, how long have you been working out? You look as ugly as ever. Oh, so mean, Bob. How long have you been working out? So here's the words, how long. He's asking about the amount of time. The time you have spent working out. You look as ugly as ever. And here we use as something as ever, meaning the same as always. So the working out is not making you look better. You look as ugly as ever. Oh, so mean. And you say, hardy har har. Bruno says, I'm supposed to eat eggs every day. So I'll put a chicken coop in that corner of the room. First up, we have hardy har har. Bob just made a joke poking fun at you. A mean joke, right? And so you say, hardy har har. Now, hardy har har is a fake laugh. If someone says a joke that's mean, or you don't really think it's funny, you can say hardy har har. You're saying this to show, ha ha, I know it's a joke, but I don't really think it's funny, or hey, you're telling a joke, but it's kind of mean. It's a sarcastic laugh. Something else you could say, if someone says something that's a joke, but it's not funny, you could say something like, oh, that's so funny. You're saying that's so funny, but you're being very sarcastic. Now, be careful of the way you say that. If you say, that's so funny, it might be that you actually think it's funny, but if you go, oh, that's so funny, <laughs> you're showing you don't think it's funny. And then you say, Bruno says I'm supposed to eat eggs every day. So here, we've learned this before, I'm supposed to, meaning it's the right thing to do. So, I'll put a chicken coop in that corner of the room. A chicken coop is like a little house that chickens live inside. And maybe you have chickens in there and they lay eggs and you get eggs every day. Sounds pretty good, right? Uh, do you live on a farm? No, you can't have a chicken coop in an apartment. That's too ridiculous. And so Bob says, what the? That's the dumbest idea ever. So ever is used to emphasize. In the year 1000, someone said a dumb joke. But this year, you said an even dumber joke. This is the dumbest idea ever. And then Bob says, how much time do you want to spend taking care of chickens? What else do you have in mind? So the first question, he's actually not looking for an answer. This is a rhetorical question. He asks the question, but the answer is obvious that you don't have time. So we have the words, how much time? This is a way to ask about the amount of time. How much time do you want to spend taking care of chickens? So we use the phrase spend time. We don't use time, we spend time. So how much time do you want to spend taking care of chickens? Oh, do you really want to spend that much time? I don't think so. And then moving on, Bob says, what else do you have in mind? You could also say, what else are you thinking about? 
Like, what other things do you want to decorate the room with? And you say, I've been bowling a lot recently. I'll put a bowling alley by the window. Ho ho! So, I've been bowling a lot recently. That means, recently, not very long ago, and close to now. In the times close to now. These days. And we use the present perfect continuous tense. Started in the past, continuing till now. And we're talking about something that happens again and again, right? So you could use the word lately if you want. Recently and lately can both be used for things happening again and again. I'll put in a bowling alley by the window. So if you want to install something, put something in your apartment, you can use the phrase put in. So put in means to set something up in your apartment. Get it ready. Oh my gosh. And Bob says, you'll never be able to fit that in here. Be more realistic. So in here, meaning in this apartment. You'll never be able to fit that in here. Be more realistic. So realistic means you're thinking about things that make sense. You could also say be more practical or be more sensible. Think about things that could really happen. Not these crazy fantasies, okay? Be more realistic. We're talking about real life, not about bowling alleys and chicken coops in your house. And so you say, I tried VR recently and it was beyond my wildest dreams. Maybe I can invest in VR and set it up over there. VR is short for virtual reality. This is where you put on goggles or a virtual reality headset, a VR headset, and it completely covers your eyes and you go to a different world, a virtual world. Virtual means it's inside of a computer. It's like reality, but it's virtual. You're inside of a computer world. Maybe you put on the headset and then you go to the top of a mountain or you put on the headset and you're under the ocean, okay? Another technology called AR. And AR is short for augmented reality. Again, reality means the real world. Augmented means changing. So virtual reality means it's a reality, like it's a world, but it's completely virtual. It's completely in the computer. But AR means augmented reality. We take the real world around us and change it. We augment reality. And that means you put on goggles or put on a headset and you still look at the world around you. But maybe in the world around you, you can see things from the computer. So maybe I put on the goggles and look at my desk and there might be a dinosaur walking on my desk. Or maybe you put on the goggles and you see birds flying inside your apartment. That would be AR. So I tried VR recently. So this happened one time. And so we use the past simple tense. It happened and it finished. I tried VR. And because it happened one time, we use the word recently. We can't use the word lately if it happened one time. And it was beyond my wildest dreams. So when you dream of things, Usually dreams are wonderful. And if you have a wild dream, maybe it's awesome, super good. If it's beyond your wildest dreams, wow, you're shocked how amazing it is. So it's even better than what you could dream about. It's super, super amazing and great. And so you say, maybe I can invest in VR and set it up over there. So to invest in a thing means to take your money and put your money into that thing. So we can use the word invest to talk about things like stocks, but we can also talk about things that we want. I want to invest in VR, or I want to invest in a new computer, or I want to invest in a new phone. So VR needs lots of pieces, and so you get it ready, put this here, put that here, put the goggles over there, that's called setting something up. Set it up. So you can set up anything. Set up my computer, set up my VR, set up your desk, all different things. You get it ready to use. And then Bob says, you always buy games at the drop of a hat 
but you hardly ever play them. How many times would you ever use VR? This is a problem that many, many people have. They buy games at the drop of a hat. Imagine someone's holding a hat and they drop it and then they decide to do something when it hits the ground. How long does it take for a hat to go from your hand to the ground? Well, it's really fast, right? It's kind of a funny phrase, but at the drop of a hat is a common way to say someone does it really quickly. It can also mean that someone does something without thinking. They decide and do it without thinking very much. They don't think too hard about the decision. Just drop a hat and then go buy the games. So you always buy games at the drop of a hat. Easy does it, slow down, think about it first. And then he says, but you hardly ever play them. So here we have hardly ever. Hardly ever means almost never. So you hardly ever play them. Maybe you only play games once a month, but you buy too many, so you hardly ever play games. Don't waste your money. How many times would you ever use VR? So here we have how many times. I want you to count the times you would play VR. And then we have the word ever, meaning in all of time. So if you invest in VR and buy it, how many times would you ever use VR? You buy it and you have it for years, but maybe you only use it one time every year. Once or twice, three, and then you forget about it. Oh my gosh, what a waste of money. And then Bob says, this conversation is taking forever. Cut to the chase and just rattle off what else you want. Rapid fire. This conversation is taking forever. So the conversation means us talking. It's taking forever. We're spending too much time. The clock is ticking. Let's hurry up. So taking forever means that something is taking a long, long time. It's not really forever, but we exaggerate and use taking forever to mean it takes a long time. Cut to the chase. So you've been talking a lot, but I want you to cut to the chase. This phrase is a very common way to say, get to the point. You've been talking about a lot of things, a lot of this, a lot of that, but I want the most important part. Now imagine there's a movie, you're watching a movie, and there's lots of talking and talking and talking, and you know that an exciting chase is going to happen. The good guy will run away and the bad guy will chase him. And you see them talking for 20 minutes and oh, they're talking too long. Just cut to the chase. And so Bob says, just rattle off what else you want. You, rattle off is to say the parts of a list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want you to say them quickly. I could list things and say first, second, third, fourth. That's to list something. I tell you a list. But if I rattle off something, that means I'm giving you the list, but really quickly. I rattle it off. And then Bob says, rapid fire. Rapid fire is a way to describe how a gun works. One gun might go boom, boom. But if it's rapid fire, it shoots really fast. It fires really quickly. Boom, 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 boom. So rapid fire means something goes super fast, one after the other. One, two, three, four, five. And so you get to your list. You say, okay, ready, set, go. I want a ping pong table, a dance floor, a basketball court, a tennis court, and the Mona Lisa. Holy moly. So a ping pong table, a table to play ping pong on, dum, dum, dum. a dance floor, a space on the floor where you can dance and party, a basketball court, a whole big place to play basketball with a nice floor and a hoop, oh, a tennis court, the big flat land with a net and then space to play a whole tennis game. And finally, lastly, the Mona Lisa. The actual painting, the Mona Lisa, you want to go to France, buy it, and bring it to your apartment. Holy moly, can you really get the Mona Lisa for your apartment? And Bob says, no, 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 and definitely no. Do you ever take life seriously? So he says, no, 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 and then for the Mona Lisa, he says, and 
Definitely no. No way, of course you can't get the Mona Lisa. Do you ever take life seriously? To take something seriously means you have that subject and you focus on it. And he uses the word ever to mean at any time. In your life, at any time, do you ever take life seriously? And you say, I'm being more serious than ever. If you ever visit my new place, it'll take your breath away. So you really, really want all those things in your apartment. I'm being more serious than ever. This is a phrase meaning, I'm being very, very, very serious right now. I'm not joking around. So we're using more serious than ever, saying that more than any time in history. And then you say, if you ever visit my new place, it'll take your breath away. So if you ever visit my new place, we use ever to show at any time. I don't know if you will, but if you ever visit my new place, what will happen? It'll take your breath away. Now, take your breath away is a phrase that means you'll be amazed, meaning it will be so amazing that you cannot breathe. Your breath means you're breathing, and that amazing place takes it away. So you go, oh, you can't breathe because it's so amazing. Now, take your breath away is also the same meaning as it'll be breathtaking. Now, what do you think? Do you think this kind of apartment would be amazing with a chicken coop, a bowling alley, a tennis court, and the Mona Lisa? Sounds pretty good to me, right? I think it would be breathtaking. <gasps> amazing. This is what might happen if you go looking at apartments and you're feeling silly and goofy and you're joking around with your friend Bob and ha ha ha, what about all these crazy things I could put in my apartment? Next up, it's your turn. I want you to take some of the ideas and phrases that we learned through this dialogue and apply them to these Chinese sentences. Oh my gosh, so quick, right? Oh, really? Maybe you want to get something for a place. Wow. Bob, are you ready for that? Sounds pretty quick, right? So, remember, leave a message in our group and I'll tell you the answers on our stream. So, get out there, keep on practicing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.